This week on Check Please South Florida, creative dishes with an upscale vibe at an award-winning steakhouse in Aventura. It was just the best, really just fresh and terrific. A funky spot for craft beer and bar food in Plantation. It was about this tall. Mm -hmm. Just filled. It's a very generous place. It's a place that you can go and relax with. A meal that will definitely soothe your soul in West Palm Beach. Hands down, it's what I always get. It's just consistent. It comes out and people literally look over at my plate and go, ooh, what should he having? Cultural, culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world. Additional funding for Check, Please! South Florida is provided by George and Helen Weaver and the Friends of South Florida PBS. Oh my gosh, it was so delicious. Crunchy and soft all at the same time. It was good. It wasn't anything special. You can taste everything, the different flavors. Oh my gosh, this is like nothing. I was like eating a cloud. Michelle Bernstein and welcome to Check Please South Florida, the show where regular people from all over South Florida recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how the show works. Every week we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot and then the other two go to check them out and see what they think. This week, bank director Bob Menconi is helping to facilitate your dining choice for a casual night out. His Broward County pick offers up delicious bar food and over 150 craft beers to choose from. And sales professional Bonnie Rennick can spot a good thing when she sees it. She says dining at her Palm Beach County pick is like hitting the Grand Slam with its display of locally sourced food prepared with classy presentations full of flavor. But first, attorney Gary Mansfield wants to lay down the law on what you can call a great restaurant. This grand steakhouse pleases all the senses with a Florida ceiling wine cellar, contemporary accents, and fantastic dishes. Gary advises that it's an experience you will want to share. It's an aventura and it's called Bourbon Steak by Michael Mina. <laughs> Bourbon Steak is a modern steakhouse managed by Chef Michael Mina based out of San Francisco. We're not the classic dark wall type of steakhouse. You can see it on our music, in our style of service, you can see it on our vibe. Our executive chef, Gabe Fenton, has been working with Chef Mina for over a decade. He is fantastic when it comes to putting menus together. We offer all kinds of cuts of meats uh, featuring Angus beef, American Wagyu beef, Japanese Wagyu beef, all of our cuts are poached in clarified butter, garlic and herbs, and then finished in a mesquite wood burning grill. One of our signature dishes is the lobster pot pie. It's a two pine main lobster cooked in a big copper pot that is covered in pastry, baked, and prepared the table for you. We want people to feel comfortable. We want people to feel at ease. We want people to come in and enjoy. And we want people to remember the dining experience that we were able to provide when they come in and talk about it when they leave as well. Brim Steak is the restaurant that you're looking for when it comes to the best dining experience. So, Bourbon is inside the resort, right? Correct. You have to walk inside, drive all the way in. It's right by Aventura Mall. Correct, right Correct. across the street, yes. And you've been going for a while. I have. Yeah. It's, I think it's the best restaurant in Aventura. It's delicious. It's a beautiful, beautiful, elegant space. Tell us about it when you walk in because it is I mean, it's breathtaking. It reminds me of what the old school steakhouse used to be like, but with a modern and upscale and elegant sort of refinement that's okay. just terrific. So what did you have this last time you went? Started out with a sashimi appetizer, and it was just the best, really just fresh and terrific. Is it tuna sashimi? Yeah. Okay. Sliced, a little, sliced. Bit of, a little bit of salt okay. on the tuna, served with you know wasabi, and it uh -huh. was just light and luscious and terrific. Okay. They yeah. start you off with fries, right? They do. You sit down, and there's three types of duck fries that come served in duck fat, three different kinds with three different types of sauce. But and also little, spices on each fry, right? Each fry and they coordinate with the type of with the type of dipping, dipping sauce that you mm -hmm. have and they're just that's terrific. They're addictive. And you all had them, right? You all got Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Yeah, they're yeah. good. And I was really surprised to see French fries come out in a restaurant like that. It's rather pleasing, uh, isn't it? Yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. it, you know, it, it, it kinda it, warms it kinda you up. changes the way you think a little bit when, when this comes mood. out. Sure. 
You can move right into your main course after that. Exactly. So what was your main course? Main course, we had a, a bone-in ribeye. It was terrific. It's always great. I believe they sous vide the, their steaks there. And I like Pittsburgh, so oh, it, it just comes out perfect. <laughs> little, yeah, Pittsburgh steak of course. in a long time. For yeah. those that don't know, Pittsburgh, it's um, really charred on the outside, on the outside. yet right. rare on the inside, yes. yeah? you just did it perfectly. Their okay. sides are terrific. We had the mushrooms there, just fresh and delish. Great little medley and uh, really just a, a, a lovely meal. Great. Bob? He said it all. It, it, it's, it's simply a beautiful place and a beautiful dining experience. It's upscale. You feel good when you walk in. Being the son of a mater d', you, you look at these things. And what did you have? We both had the uh, signature drink of the night, the Rising Sun, which is gin and, gin and Riesling. It was How very good. Was it it good? was very refreshing. I didn't want anything heavy to drink, mm -hmm. and we both enjoyed it very much. Okay. Uh, appetizer was the, was the beef capaccio. I had the New York strip steak, which I never turned down. It was large, uh -huh. a big piece, and it was over a bed of mashed potatoes and a side of broccoli. Dessert made up a big part. They had s'mores as one dessert, and uh -huh. hazelnut as another. Since I said I can't decide whether the s'mores or the hazelnut, she brought me both. It was a very nice upscale dining experience, and thank you for the referral. Glad you liked it. Of course. Oh, we did. <laughs> Good. Well, and I'm, and I'm saying that honestly. <laughs> yeah. The host just greeted me by name. So I did have a reservation that I had done online. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm assuming when she kind of saw one girl walk in by herself, that must be me. But it still was nice to walk in and have them say hello, Bonnie, to me. So that was really special. And what did you have? I started with the carpaccio. It's one of my favorite dishes. I thought the presentation was absolutely beautiful. It was all done almost like a flower. And it had the dollops of the aioli and the fresh greens. It was really, really beautiful. That was a real showstopper for me. It could have stopped then at the fries and the carpaccio. I had a sirloin steak, and it came with a side of mashed potatoes. The steak was charred perfectly. I ordered medium. Uh, the potatoes I was not a fan of. And I'm Irish, and I like, a, I like a good mashed potato, but these were not my favorite. Okay. So I ended up not finishing those. But then I have to tell you, I ended up speaking with the waiter and let him know that my daughter attends culinary school and the chef came out from the kitchen Gabe and introduced Gabe. himself to me yeah. and spent some time with which I thought was boy this is really really, really really special exactly yeah. and I was invited back to the kitchen for a tour wow. if I wanted um, which I declined um, but asked for a rain check because I want to be able to go back with my daughter and have her share that experience so what's interesting when you do go back in the kitchen is that as you had talked about sous vide they actually when you order a steak, any cut, they actually place it in the perfect temperature holding unit of vat of butter. And I finished my meal off, sorry gentlemen, but I was given a tasting of the desserts. Nice. I had four desserts on my table. Bonnie, I want to go with you. <laughs> <laughs> people you were walking all. by, all, right? people were walking by and looking at me, and I was like, "Yes, that's yeah. right. It's not even my birthday." <laughs> so I, I was made to feel like queen for a day, honestly, at my experience. That's lovely. It was definitely yeah. a winner. Good, I'm glad. It. Well, Gary, bourbon steak was your choice. Please sum it up for us. It's sort of old school steakhouse with a modern and elegant upscale uh, feel to it. Lovely, make you feel at home, stat, wait staff, and the food's great, so we enjoy going. Bob? It was everything we expected for where we went. We were prepared for a nice meal, but we had a nicer meal. Bye, nice. Again, when you think steakhouse, this was the place to go. You can imbibe and dine at Bourbon Steak by Michael Mina, located at 19999 West Country Club Drive in Aventura, inside the Turdberry Isle Resort. Open daily for dinner, reservations are accepted, and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $100. I love french fries, but making the perfect texture of a french fry, that crispy on the outside, creamy on the inside, is not as hard as you think. It's actually more about science, doing it properly and using the right potato. So let me show you my little trick to making perfect fries. So you get a potato, slicing down, and then layering them up and cutting them into long fry pieces. So you put them in ice water for 20 minutes. After they're in ice water, you drain them and you get them really, really dry because we're going to go into hot oil next. You're going to cook them 
at oil set at 250 degrees. We're gonna cook them until they're really nice and soft. So these have already cooked for 10 minutes and I've let them cool. That's really important. These are beautiful fries ready to go. Heat this oil back up to 350 degrees. And now we're gonna make French fries. And this will take four to five minutes, but it's really important that you have a tray ready to welcome these fries. So let's take a look at how our crispy fries are doing. We're almost there, We're getting nice and golden. So once they've turned nice and golden, go ahead and place them on your napkin or paper towel to blot them off. And place it inside of your bowl. And there you have it. A little ketchup for me and a little french fry for you. You gotta try the recipe, they are delicious. To make the perfect french fry, check out my recipe at checkpleasefl.com. Now bank director Bob Manconi credits his pick success to an incredible beer selection with delicious American bar food. He said it's a funky place to kick back with friends. So just take your pick from the self-serve coolers, check out the eclectic decor and indulge. It's in Plantation and it's called Riverside Market. Riverside Market, it's an oasis that my wife and I created. We took a rundown convenience store and we made it into one of the top craft beer bars in the world with a judgment-free atmosphere where there's no televisions and everyone's happy. We're kind of famous, I guess, first for our hummus, our fish tacos, our pizzas. I mean, we really, everything that we can make from scratch, we do. You go ahead and you, know, you just walk up to that cooler, there's 650 beers from around the world. We focus on a lot of local first, but there's so much love in craft brewing that we just want to share that love. We were going to make t-shirts that said, I am Riverside, but instead we changed it to, we are Riverside. Because one thing Riverside does do is build community. Everything's kind of rustic, everything's kind of cool. You know, our, we, our theme is like a tribute to the neighborhood as it once was. Mid-century plantation, whatever black and white photographs, we use whatever reclaimed wood we can gather up for accessories and decor and actual barrels for tables. Everything is concrete, metal, wood, steel, all real objects. When you walk into a Riverside, you should feel 100% at home in a judgment-free environment. So it's a serve yourself kind of a place, huh, Bob? A friend of ours went there and said, Bob, you have to try this place. And they have probably no less than 150 craft beers in wow. a cooler. You just go out and pick the one you want. You keep up with that. That's amazing. It is. And they also have craft sodas. You sit down. You can sit at a high top. You can sit at a table. You can sit on the sofa. And just sit with friends. And it's, it's a very, very casual place to go. And uh, we ordered uh, the appetizer platter, which had some veggies on it. It had some cold cuts on it and did that. And they have this sandwich there that's called a not from New York pastrami sandwich. Okay. And I'm a pastrami freak. I love <laughs> it. So I ordered that. Okay. It was about this tall. Mm -hmm. Just filled. The bread was good. It's a very generous place. It's a very, it's a place that you can go and relax with. And you're not hurried at all. Gary? Wasn't exactly my favorite. Um, I'm not a beer guy, but I went thinking, well, this could be a place where you're going to go watch a game, hang out with friends. It just didn't really do it for me. But it's a nice vibe, and I tried to pick a beer. Uh, somehow I ended up with a, actually one I really liked. Did you? Yeah, do I you did. Do you remember what it was? I don't. I have a clue. Okay. I it was sort of eeny, meeny, miny beer. Uh, <laughs> and I got one. I enjoyed it. Okay, so what did you try selection. as far as food? Well, we asked the server what they recommend. They said mm. they're known for the pizza and the pizza and their hoagies. So we went with the pizza. Mm -hmm. um, again, it wouldn't drive me back there. We did also Can have... You know what pizza it was? Do you remember? Just a margarita. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we also a couple things on the menu that excited me. Mm -hmm. One was the they have a $4, a $4 grilled cheese. I said, I got to try this. Who doesn't like a grilled cheese? It was cheddar cheese, and it was melted properly, but I don't know. Uh, and finally, though, we ha I ended up having uh, a cauliflower buffalo wings. And I oh. thought they were buffalo wings chicken wings covered with, you know, the riced uh, cauliflower. Right. But in, they were just cauliflower f uh, with buffalo wings, and they were fried. They were, it's hard not to be good. Yeah, so that was sure. great. Okay. Well, yeah. that's something. Yeah. That's a fun place to hang out. <laughs>
You also had regular chicken wings, though, because you obviously were missing the chicken. Yeah, <laughs> had to give it a try. Yes. How were those? They were delicious. They were good. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's something. Mm -hmm. Funny. When I walked in, the young lady, Trisha, greeted me warmly. Young girl, really sweet. I told it was my first time. I, as soon as I looked around, I loved the decor. And you took my word, funky. Funky and fun all day long. Um, I saw that the bar was right there, so instead of taking a table, I went right to the bar. So I sat at the bar. There was a huge chalkboard with all the different beers. Um, she actually came around and, to serve me and asked what I was interested in. So I went with, I think it was called Upslope. It was absolutely delicious. The menu I thought was great. I thought there was a lot of fun items on there. Again, terribly reasonable. So I thought I would try a few different things. The first thing that caught my eye were the fried chickpeas. Mm -hmm. They were spiced. The skins kind of were crispy and kind of popped, but yet inside the chickpea was nice and soft and they brought out a bowl of those. I could probably get addicted to those very easily. My second choice, I went with the wings. Um, I don't eat wings all the time, so I thought this is the place to eat them if I was gonna have them with a nice mm -hmm. cold beer. The wings were delicious. There were several different flavors, right. and she actually suggested to me, since I couldn't make up my mind, to try them both. It was barbecue and a traditional buffalo and it really was wonderful. Anything else? I had the grilled cheese also, because I oh, thought, what the heck? Really? When I was looking at all the grilled cheese, I saw that one was on a marble rye and uh -huh. Swiss, which I love marble rye. So I ordered that. I was really disappointed in the grilled cheese. It was really dry for me. I took about two bites, and I would never order that again. But other than that, the service was phenomenal, and the place was a lot of fun, and I definitely would return just for that. I love that they they allow you to choose the bread, choose the cheese. Right, it had such promise. Yeah, that's right, awesome, going into but it, yeah, it didn't work. a little lackluster. But I, but I will, the wrong decision, I obviously. will tell you, I'll tell you the service though. They they did it with a smile. They were really friendly and really helpful. So mm -hmm. made up for the uh, for the grilled cheese, I think. <laughs> so it sounds like a great place to hang and be exactly. with friends and don't take life too seriously. We just as funky as you can imagine. It's a good time, and that's what it is. Well, Bob, Riverside Market was your choice. Please sum it up for us. Numerous beers, numerous sodas, uh, a basic menu, and a place to have a good time and relax in with your friends. Carrie. My college dorm room, all over again. <laughs> and I liked going back to my college dorm room. Funny. Um, I definitely found it a really nice, casual Florida vibe. Um, I thought the menu was great. I would probably just stick to the appetizers all day long. For a funky night out, visit Riverside Market, located at 6900 Cypress Road in Plantation with two additional locations in Fort Lauderdale. Open daily for lunch and dinner. Reservations are not accepted, and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $35. And now, finally, sales professional Bonnie Rennick has been keeping an eye on this modern farmhouse, and she's found it to be good for the soul. The Southern-inspired cooking with a Mediterranean twist offers a unique menu with seasonally-influenced dishes, personable service, and a chic setting. She calls it a recipe for success. It's in West Palm Beach, and it's called The Regional Kitchen and Public House. The Regional Kitchen and Public House is an American restaurant with a focus on Southern cuisine that's inspired by regionally sourced ingredients. The style and the design of the space is really kind of inspired to make you feel that you're in someone's home. I'm originally from North Carolina and I grew up cooking. I started cooking competitions when I was nine um, and it's really all I've ever done. My grandmother was from Greece, so I grew up with kind of a strange mix of Southern and Greek food. And we would always have Spanakopita and collard greens. That to me was my normal. Although I'm classically trained and went to culinary school, um, as I've gotten older, I've kind of gone back to my roots. And the menu is kind of a story of the timeline of you know my career as a chef so there's southern there's mediterranean there's a little latin influence and i think that that people find it unique because it kind of tells a story i want people to feel a sense of community and know that the very base of the regional is that we not only source our food regionally but we are really about the community so every touch in here is is a local touch the regional kitchen and public house is going to your grandmother's and eating on like the fancy china, but it's also very soul satisfying and approachable cuisine. So tell me about this pick. It's my favorite place. The first weekend I was there, I literally took my phone with all of my dates and called the hostess over and she took my phone for me and booked me for every night pre-theater. Wow. 
this was a winner for I me. I heard about you. <laughs> so the chef and owner, uh, Lindsay Autry, was working with me for probably the first 10 years of her career. And there are pieces in the restaurant that do belong to her family that had a peach farm and uh, there are little remnants of parts of her life. She's from North Carolina. So what did you have the last time you went in? What I always order. <laughs> I'm a bit of a creature of habit. Um, there are restaurants where I get my burger, where I get my pasta, and this is where I get my chicken. I do the boneless chicken over a bed of orzo. It comes with shaved Brussels sprouts on the top with a sprinkle of feta cheese and a little bit of jalapeno. Hands down, it's what I always get. It's just consistent. It comes out and people literally look over at my plate and go, ooh, what should he having? So it's a real crowd pleaser too, I think. Anything else? I always do the Caesar salad. I love that it's the whole leaf. Mm -hmm. Nice fresh anchovies on it. Always love a, a really good Caesar salad. I think her dressing couldn't be any better. Great. Gary, what'd you think? You know, before we went, we looked at the menu, and the menu is phenomenal. Southern style, mm -hmm. has a great wine list, really. Yeah, she's Greek, too, so you might find little touches of the Mediterranean on there as well. I don't know if but you saw that. But it's a unique menu. It's not things that you normally find. No. And so we were really excited to go. Uh, unfortunately, the day we were there, the air conditioning was broken. Oh. So it sort of affected of uh, our, our, our experience, but still, really, some of the food was just phenomenal. We had friends in <laughs> from, uh, a friend in from London, and he just loves fried chicken, so when he heard that there was fried chicken yeah. on the menu, we had to go. They started with the, the bone marrow, mm -hmm. and people were just, you know, at the table were just so excited about how great it was. We had the tomato pie, which I had never had. I thought it was great. Tomato pie is a southern staple. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was, it was probably delicious. get some of the best tomatoes grown in South Florida. It was really, really good. Oh, good. Uh, we kept going. We kept ordering because uh, I, I wanted to try all these mm -hmm. dishes on the menu. So we had the cobia, fresh as could be. Mm -hmm. We had uh, a pork milanese that was out of this world. It was shocking how good it was. Which really, the pork? Yeah, it was so was it so a chop? good. No, it was a uh, like a like a veal milanese would be. Oh, it was pounded. just unique. Yeah, yeah. It was so. It was mm -hmm. so. It really was great. Did it come with anything? I had a bunch of I have side of veggies and it was uh -huh. delicious. Really. Do you remember what the cobia came with? Yeah. I had, Great uh, gnocchi. I mean, gnocchi. Whole, yeah, yeah, oh, nice. made in house. It was fresh and delicious. It was a recommendation from the chef. We really, we really liked it. Uh, we had a patty melt. Was outrageous. Wow. The patty oh, the patty Let melt. me to toasted per to perfection. The cheese was melted perfectly, and the meat was. Just, it was really the the perfect dish. Yeah. Really is a great menu. We're excited yeah. to be there. Yeah, yeah. Drinks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, what do you have? We had a bottle of wine, and again, they have a wine, great wine list, mm -hmm. and overall great experience, and we'll definitely go back and uh, enjoyed it. Good, good. Yeah. What did you think, Pop? I thought it was a winner. You pull right up to the valet, they take your car, you walk in, they greet you right away, and you had the experience of walking into a, a winery. The ambiance was beautiful. We were seated in a booth so you could see the kitchen, and again, being the son of a maitre d', I look at these things, and the kitchen looked immaculate. It looked beyond immaculate. Mm. Oh. We sat down, the, the server came to our table right away, and it's definitely a place we would go back to. But we had pimento cheese platter. Oh, yeah. It was a cheese spread that we put on oh. crackers. That we oh. had various crackers and veggies with it. Nice. And it went right on there and it blended in real well. They make their own in-house crackers, which I cannot get enough I of. I forgot about that. No. So it's, right. So as soon as I order those that, I always ask for extra they crackers. Are unbelievable, mm -hmm. those crackers that they have. So what <laughs> else did you have? I had the uh, pork dish, mm -hmm. which was uh, basically a, a fried pork fillet uh -huh. uh, over, over a, uh, a mashed potato with a side of, uh, there was a veggie on the plate, which I, I believe. If it was the same thing you had, so. probably. Kind of like a schnitzel. Right, exactly, okay. exactly. For dessert, chocolate layer cake. <laughs> we shared it. Uh, it was very rich and it was very delicious. <laughs> Moist. So, and very moist. Moist is everything. And we right? just had we just had a, we just had a uh, um, just had a glass of house wine with with dinner. Nice. You want to talk a little about the decor? Yeah, it was it was uh, southern style, sort of. Mm -hmm. It was it was light and fresh. It was a lovely place to go. When yeah. you walk in, the bar is on the left side. Yeah, and it's, and it's huge. A beautiful, it's beautiful, beautiful bar. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the prices? I thought the prices were very fair. Yeah. We got quite a bit for what we paid. Um, Truthfully, I thought they were a little bit lower than what I would have expected for the area. Oh. I love it. Well, Bonnie, the Regional Kitchen and Public House was your pick. Please sum it up for us. If you love southern comfort food in a really nice, chic setting, it's really worth going. You will not be disappointed. Gary? I think the chic setting says it all. 
lovely and elegant. It was a ni really nice experience. Bob? Can't say enough about it. It was just a super place to go to. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. That makes me so happy. Thank Yay, you. she's doing that. <laughs> to veer away from the standard dining experience, check out the Regional Kitchen and Public House located at 651 Okeechobee Boulevard in West Palm Beach. Open daily for lunch and dinner. Reservations are accepted and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $60. We've had such a good time with the three of you. I want to thank my guests, Gary Mansfield, Bob Menconi, and Bonnie Rennick. For more about mm -hmm. the restaurants and recipes featured in the show, or if you'd like to apply to be a guest reviewer, visit us at checkpleasefl.com. And remember, find us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Join us next time for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please South Florida. I'm Michelle Bernstein, and I will see you then. Salud, Cheers. everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. You're out. OK. We're coming. Cheers. Salud, everybody. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you for having us. Cultural culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world.